The main Neutron channel strip plugin packs a lot of features into a relatively small footprint. Before looking at the individual processing modules, let's take a look at the overall layout of the plugin. You could break up the Neutron channel strip into four distinct sections. At the top, you'll find the preset menu, along with access to the undo list, a zero latency option, the options dialog, and the help. There's also a field for naming the particular instance. This is used by the plugin's intelligent analysis and display features. The two icons in the middle display either show the detailed view, which provides access to all the modules in use, or the assistant view, which offers automatic analysis and setup of a processing chain. We'll look at the assistant later in the course. Just below, in the detailed view, is the module signal chain. You can have EQ, two compressors, transient shaper, exciter, gate, sculptor, and unmask modules. Here you can enable and disable each one, or remove it with the X. The mix slider allows for parallel processing, and individual presets can be called up specifically for that processor type. You can drag the modules to reorder them, and if you're not using all the modules, a click in the empty slot at the right lets you add additional modules until you hit the maximum complement. Below that is the main work area, where the currently selected modules, displays, and controls are accessed. Most of the modules include spectral displays, histograms, or both. The compressor, gate, exciter, and transient shaper can be operated as either single-band or multi-band processors, with up to three bands. Multi-band settings are usually made at the top of the main work area by hovering over that area, clicking to create new bands, and adjusting their crossover frequencies. Besides the individual band controls, each band has bypass and solo buttons, and can be removed via a click within that band on the X. I'll cover all the details as I go through each of the modules in the next several videos. But first, there's one more place where Neutron offers users some intelligent analysis to help get started with the various mix processes. In each of the main processors, you'll find a pair of buttons to the right, just above the main display, a Learn button, and a Reset button. These have basically the same function for all the effects. For example, in the EQ, if you hit the Learn button, Neutron will analyze that track's audio as it plays and simply arrange the position of the EQ frequency nodes, placing them at points that its analysis suggests would be good frequencies at which to apply EQ. This is based on the analysis of aspects of the audio, like harmonic content, areas of resonance, and sibilance. This feature doesn't apply any EQ, it simply places the nodes in useful spots to speed along the user's manual efforts at addressing what it thinks may be potential problem areas. Experienced mixers may have already developed a pretty good ear for identifying target frequencies for EQ, but less experienced ones could find this helpful. In the other processors, this function is only active when multiband processing is enabled. It'll again analyze the audio and automatically set what it suggests may be optimal crossover points for the two or three bands. And once more, no audio processing is done, it just offers these settings as starting points. In all processors, the reset button simply restores the nodes or crossover points to the default values. On the right is the output section. Most of this area is taken up with the input and output level meters. It's also where you access the final output limiter, where you can choose among several of Isotope's well-respected limiter algorithms. And at the bottom are some additional basic mixing controls. I'll look at the output section in more detail in a later video. There are a few settings in the Options dialog box that are worth taking a brief look at. In the General tab, if True Bypass is enabled, then whenever a module is bypassed, it'll stop adding latency and release its CPU overhead. You can turn off the rollover pop-up tooltips, but unlike some implementations, these work on enough of a delay that they're not intrusive, and they can be helpful, so you might want to leave them on. There are also several metering options, and for the spectrum curves, you can view the spectrum in third octave and other displays. You can also alter the ballistics. Slowing them down can sometimes provide an easier to follow readout of the frequency balance.
With that overview out of the way, let's move on to a look at each of the individual processors, starting with the EQ.